Hello and welcome back to Alice Talks Football and today's video is five things we learned from Manchester United's 2-0 loss at Anfield today. So remember to hit that like button and subscribe down below for more football and Man United related content. Now, to sum up the game, you know, I, it wasn't happy, there was some awful performance in there, but we did look like we gave them a challenge, which, you know, they weren't all over us, there were moments where they're all over us, you know, 10 minute spells. But we looked like we were in the game right until the last second. So I'm not like sitting there angrily at it. You know, I look, they were just world class. You know, they showed why they were world class. We had some good spells. We pressed them, got them worried, got them anxious. But yeah, we, we weren't good enough. When I look at our team and then I look at their team and I look at the papers, like, they had the better team. But it is frustrating, I think, because I just, there were some spells in that game where we were just bloody dreadful. So yeah. Today's video is five things we learned from the game. And the first thing that we learned, which we probably already knew, is zonal marking. Why do we still do it? We've conceded eight goals from corners or set pieces in the Premier League. That's the worst record of any team. Zonal marking meant that Williams was trying to stop Van Dyke. Williams, like, if anyone's going to be on Van Dyke, we need Maguire. Maguire's, we see that like, you could say Maguire could have done better, but it's zonal marking. Williams' job is to keep Van Dyke out, and I really think that it should just be one on one marking. Maguire gets Van Dyke because it's not fair on Williams, and I think that problem is not the players, it's the coaching. I don't know why we're still doing zonal marking. Like, have they not seen how bad our record is at corner? So, why, why are we still zonal marking? So, that's the first thing we learned. The second thing we learned is we get shaken when we go behind. We started off the first 15 minutes, I thought we were the better team, and then they scored. And then when Liverpool scored, they just looked like they were going to keep scoring and scoring and scoring and scoring. We got a bit lucky, like, they had like a 10 15 minute spell where it could have been 3 3 3 0. It was like when we played Man City and it was 3 0. And then obviously we got back into it at the end of the um, second half, and you know, then they had a spell for 10 minutes at the beginning of the second half, and then we got then we looked like we were pressing them again. But as soon as we can see, we just looked shaken, nervous, like it was gone it was out and uh, 10 minutes after they scored was just awful it was just awful and in the first 10 minutes of the second half were just awful so yeah that's the second thing we learned the third thing we learned is we just looked exhausted i don't know if something to do with fitness and the coaching or just because we played so many games we played balls three days ago all the injuries so it's the same players playing the same games but Wan Vesaka was his worst game for Man United. He just looked exhausted. We generally looked tired. The only player that I thought kept going and going and going was Fred, who was my man of the match. I thought Fred was brilliant, but we just looked exhausted. And I think like we need depth. We need to give players a rest because they looked done. They just looked uh, done. Liverpool had more energy, although we really gave it a fight in the last like half an hour, and I think like we gave it our all. But uh, we 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 weren't like we just looked exhausted. We just looked down and out. And, we couldn't break them down once again, you know. They parked the bus against us for the last like ten minutes, which you know, fair play to them. They won them up, but we we were just down. Like we didn't look fit, other than Fred, who was just running around like a wild donkey. But we just looked exhausted. Okay, this is like point number four, and I'm going to talk about some individual player performances. So I thought De Gea made a few good saves. You know, had that moment with Van Dyke with the goal was disallowed. Could he have saved Salah's one? But he made a brilliant save on Henderson. He made brilliant saves his feet, I think it was on Mane. I think Salah made some brilliant saves. I think Luke Shaw made some brilliant tackles. He stopped Mane scoring with that tackle. I thought Luke Shaw had a decent game. To be honest, I know a lot of people don't like Luke Shaw, but I thought he had a decent game. Fred was amazing. I thought Fred was the best player on the pitch. I know I think Jordan Henderson got mad at the match, but I mean, Fred just did not stop going. He looked a threat. He's not a goal scorer, but like he just looked a threat. Easily the best player. And Juan Bissaka was poor. I don't think the back five suits Juan Bissaka. He's a very defensive star right back. He just looked out of it. And because of he had two players on him, constantly moving the pass ball, it wasn't the best game for Juan Bissaka. So that was the fourth thing we learned. And that was general player performances. And the fifth thing we learned is we need to spend money this January. Because if Rashford is out for three months, we can't rely on Greenwood, James, Martial to be our front three. Martial is brilliant. Greenwood has magical moments, he's going to be brilliant. James, again, he, he has potential to be good, but Martial's the only person in that front three that is good enough to play for Manchester United regularly. James should never have been starting for us when we brought him. He was always meant to be a bench player that we brought in at the end of games where he's going to have the most impact. Greenwood's an 18-year-old, you know, he has his games, but he's playing a lot. We really need to, uh, so we really missed that on Harlem, but we really need to go for a winger or an attacker this January. I know it's hard, I think maybe a, a number 10 Bruno Fernandes is our priority, I know he's on the right as well. But we need to go for Bruno Fernandes, Sumer, and I think we're honestly going to have to look into a winger. I mean, we probably can't get Sancho, but like, we can't, if Rashford is out for three months on a it's pretty reliable report, 
we have no chance of getting fourth with that front three unless Pereira steps up as a right winger. But Pereira's not a right winger. Greenwood, James, Martial, they're good players, but I, I can't, I just... We, we miss Rashford, we've just seen how important Rashford is for us in the last two games where, you know, he didn't really play against Wolves, came on and get injured. And, that, I mean, the Glazers, they have to spend money. Woodward has to buy. Like, I think that's what we learned is that how important Rashford is. And I'm really sad that he's injured because he's having the season of his life. Like, he was proving all his doubts is wrong. He was on course to get 20 goals a season. Only De Bruyne and Vardy had contributed to more goals in the Premier League. He, he was doing brilliant. And it's, it's a shame because I was really happy with Rashford. I thought he was proving everyone wrong. I thought he'd be the main man of the Euros. I thought he could maybe get a turn out team. And he's injured. And I'm hoping it's two months. Maybe he'll be back in end of March. Because we've obviously got Europa League games to play, but I don't know. I just fingers crossed we buy something in January. And that is five things we learned from Manchester United losing 2 0 to Liverpool. Please like this video, subscribe down below for more, and then comment your opinions on the game because I try and reply to all my comments. Cheers.